everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech, and today we are going to continue on our grounding improvements to the car. And today we're going to replace the engine jumper ground right here. So this was installed because of the engine mounts. So to improve the ground, what they did was they made a connection here between the bolt for the engine mount that holds it to the engine, and then they connected it to the bracket bolt down in there. It's kind of hard to see, but right there. So they've got this jumper wire here. This thing is really uh, in kind of bad shape. It's original, so it's over 40 years old. And I'm going to run a separate wire from here to this top one. The reason why I'm going with the top one is because I can't get a wrench around the lower one because it's too close to the engine mount. On the top, however, there's some room in there, so I'm going to go for that. The first thing you got to do is you have to loosen up this bolt and you actually have to remove the whole thing. So on this side, you have a nylock nut and a washer in addition to the ring terminal for the wire. I've already loosened it up, so what all you got to do to do that is get yourself a breaker bar and just loosen from behind. What I do is I just started working at the nylock nut and then I held the nut in the back with a socket. So here we are in the behind the engine mount and you can see that there is a standard nut and washer back there. That's what comes off don't try to take the nylock nut off. It's better just to take the the standard nut that's behind here, and you can just pull the entire uh, threaded rod out that those are connected to, and then slip your new terminal over that. So as part of my regrounding project, I'm using zero gauge wire. It's actually holding cable, and I'm using these you can use 3 8 inch lugs for the, uh, for the terminals. And so how I measured out what I'm going to need for this is I actually just took this other uh, connector that I used as a referenced, and this one seems to fit fine. So what I'm going to do is just measure out based on this one how much of the zero gauge cable I'm going to need, cut it, and then crimp my, my 3 8 inch lug on there. Okay, so I went ahead and cut off as much of the zero gauge wire that I needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and crimp the lug on. So in order to crimp these, um, you've got to sort of twist the lug on the end of the wiring and you need to use a proper uh, cable crimping tool. So this one right here will do zero gauge terminals. And that's what we're going to go ahead and use for this one. So for the connector, I measured about seven and a half inches from the center of each terminal eye. So seven and a half inch cable. So another thing you can do to make sure you have right orientation on your lugs is you can come over here and do sort of a test fit. So you've got one lug that's crimped and the other one is free. So I have not crimped this end yet. So what you can do is you can kind of simulate how it would be and twist the free end around and then try to align your free end up the proper orientation with the bolt up top right here. So when you're crimping, you want to crimp from top to bottom. You don't want to crimp sideways. So you just got to put your crimping tool in the right setting, the right size and then make sure at the right position. Don't want to be too far down. So what I like to do is I like to hold the terminal place this way. That way it doesn't move at all. And there you go. And now you've got your crimp 
and it didn't pull away from the sleeve. As you can see, so it's a good crimp. So I definitely recommend using some uh, degreaser on here. Clean this up. In order to get that top bolt off, it's better to go from behind right here. Once you get it loose, it's pretty easy to just take off by hand. So it's a bolt and a washer right there. And just before you make your connection, you're gonna want to clean this area off right here. So the first thing you wanna do before you mount your new engine ground is remove the old one. Basically what you want to do is pull that pull that threaded rod out. Just undo the nut on the other side. Pull the threaded rod out. There's a tunnel in there. So don't worry about reconnecting it. It's actually really easy to do. Disconnect the old one. And we'll set that aside for the moment. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is all nice and clean. It's actually not that bad. Put a little bit of this degreaser on there. Since this is an electrical connection, technically, uh, we're gonna go ahead and apply some dielectric grease to the bolts and the washers and the nuts. Just underneath the washer should, should be fine. And then once we um, torque down the, the nuts here and the bolt on top, we'll go ahead and apply some dielectric grease on top of these as well. So we've gone ahead and coated some dielectric grease to the terminals as well. And then what we'll do is go ahead and make our connections. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna run this and attach it to the back. That way we preserve the original ground connection but we're fortifying it with a better connection. More protected, thicker gauge wire. I'm gonna go ahead and run our connection through there like that. Go ahead and insert. Make sure we don't get any dielectric grease on the threads because when we torque this down, it has to be to factory specifications. And we'll go ahead and relocate this through this little opening right here. Feed it through there and then pick it up on the other side. I'm gonna just leave that there for now. And then we'll go ahead and run the bolt. So now we have our two connections made. So all we need to do now is just torque down the nut, we'll be doing that using a torque wrench. We're gonna go ahead and torque that to 18 foot-pounds per the factory specifications. So we got our torque wrench set to 18. So as you can see, I've relocated the original engine ground to behind the engine mount. Okay, so we went ahead and torqued the nut to the factory specified 18 foot-pounds, and now we're gonna go ahead and tighten the bracket bolt on top there. We're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of dielectric grease around here. This keeps out corrosion, keeps out the elements, provides for a much better electrical connection. So that concludes the video. We've applied the dielectric, we've torqued everything down the factory specifications. And if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and leave those down below. And thanks for watching.